Whenever I do workshops at the end of the year, there is often this reflection activity that I have teachers do. And almost always, there is a list of common things that teachers wish they had done during that first week or first month of school. And so in today's video, I am sharing with you those things that teachers wish they had done during the first week of school in hopes that you will listen and you won't have the same regrets that they did. Coming up next. Hey everybody, Michelle Holiday here. I am a behavior strategist and I help teachers, schools, districts, and youth-based organizations learn how to manage their students, classrooms, and learning environments with less stress and less struggle. And in today's video, I am sharing with you about seven things that teachers tend to wish they had done or mastered in that first week to first month of school. One of my most favorite things to do with schools, districts, and youth organizations is to provide them with a series of workshops that start in the beginning of the school year and end in the last month of school, all to help provide them with different strategies that go with the different seasons of a school year. Oftentimes, at the end of the school year, we'll do a reflection activity where we'll look at what are some things that we wish we had done or mastered in the first month of school. And over the years, there are some commonalities that I've seen. And so today's video, I'm really going to share with you some of the common things that teachers have shared with me. So let's get started with number one. Number one, set clear expectations. Now, I know this seems like a really basic strategy. But oftentimes teachers may communicate expectations, but they're not setting them. And what do I mean by that? When you think about setting an expectation, you want to make it very clear, but you also want to establish it, which can look like repetition, practicing it, talking about it, writing about it, all of those things to set it in the mindset and the culture of your classrooms. So something teachers say to me is that I wish I had really been clear and really been consistent about setting clear expectations on what I wanted to see from my students. Strategy number two, build relationships with the students. Teachers I've worked with have shared to me that they wish they had invested the time to build relationships with their students, building a relationship of trust and respect. So instead of just hopping straight to the academics or hopping straight to the lessons, actually spending time to get to know the strengths and the weaknesses of their students, spending time investing trust, which looks like, which can look a lot like being consistent in what you say and you do with the student, and also building an atmosphere of respect. So meaning teaching them about respect, demonstrating respect, practicing respect, so that as the school year starts to move along quickly, the foundation of respect has been set and can be continued throughout the school year. Strategy number three, planning engaging lessons. One thing I truly believe in is that the more engaging your lesson is, the less behavior problems you tend to have. Of course, there are always expectations to that rule, but for me, I have often found as a former teacher myself or as someone who has been supporting schools district-wide, that when you have engaging lessons that students are involved in, that students take some responsibility for, that students see a connection between school and maybe the community or the outside world, students are really invested in doing the work, participating in the lesson, and they don't have time or the inclination to misbehave. So being intentional about planning engaging lessons, at least weekly, is something that teachers wish they had spent more time doing. Strategy number four, effective communication with everyone involved. So some things teachers wish they had done is to communicate more with their administration, their parents, as well as their students about expectations, about issues that were happening or that they were beginning to see develop in the classroom. Wishing that they had kept the lines of communication open. For a lot of teachers, they found that it would have made things easier for them as situations arose or to prevent situations before they got worse. Strategy number five, addressing behaviors consistently. The thing teachers communicated to me that they wish they had not let so many behaviors go in the early stages while they were small and while they were manageable, but rather that they had addressed the behaviors in the moment or very quickly so that they could not have grown 
bigger. And I support that 100%. I believe that if you can address a behavior quickly while they're small, it often prevents them from growing bigger as the year goes along. Strategy number six, creating a positive student environment. So one thing teachers say they wish they had done is spent more time being positive with their students, recognizing students' strengths, doing different activities that recognize students' strengths or help them build their confidence, as well as keeping the environment as free as possible of insults and keeping the communication positive between the teacher and the student and between students and students, making sure that they were keeping name calling out of the classroom. Those kind of things they wish they had invested more in to keep the classroom environment positive. They recognize that had they been more intentional about developing a positive environment when the school months got long, it really would have been helpful to have that environment in place. Strategy number seven, time management. Teachers wish they had learned how to manage their school day and their activities well. And some of that, in real talk, some of that is going to come with experience. But I think they were saying they wish they'd spent more time figuring out how to manage their time well, because it really seemed to slip by really quickly at times during the school year. And the last strategy they share with me is that they wish they had gotten more classroom management support or education on the front end. So they wish that they had entered the school year with more strategies for their classroom management toolbox and more methods and systems to help them manage their classrooms. Because there were definitely some schools where I wasn't able to start with them until well into the school year or right before the winter break. And I get it. And that's why I talk about the value of getting professional development during the summer, if you can, because it can really help set you up for success when it comes to the school year. If you're looking for some classroom management strategies, I do have some on-demand workshops that you can take. I also have this live classroom management workshop series. If you check it out, it's in the link below. But there you have it, seven strategies teachers wish they had done or mastered in the beginning of the school year. What about you? What strategies on this list do you plan to work on before the beginning of the school year? Or what strategies did I not mention that you think would really be beneficial for teachers entering into a new school year? I'd love to hear from you and I will see you in the next video.